Today we're looking at the TR1616 and PMC16 personal monitoring system combination from DBX. Now this is uh, not dissimilar I guess to some other personal monitoring systems in that you input your signals to a device, it then encodes them onto a Cat5 type cable which then links out to your various stations. Mm. Initial thoughts, Jason? Well, yeah, there are a few products on the market like this, particularly that use a proprietary bus, a uh, digital bus. Um, this is the Harman Group's solution to the problem, um, being easily incorporated uh, using BSS Blue Link. And uh, yeah, look, these are the little breakouts. You know, um, to a muso, pretty straightforward. You've got your channels, you know, you can adjust your volumes, your panning, and your effect level. It's, um, it's pretty straightforward and effective, and again, you know, um, kind of familiar to anybody who's been using one of these types of products in this kind of environment. Yeah, I mean look, they, these are quite compact. There's a thread mount in the base so you can actually put it on a mic stand, it'll sit flat. Possibly if you could find a nice bracket of some kind you could actually clamp it onto mm. as an extension to another mic stand. Mm. Uh, the, the cabling system is quite good in that you can set up a redundant loop so mm. if you lose one segment mm. you don't actually lose the whole network. It'll just travel backwards around the other way. Mm -hmm. Now. One thing I think is very cool about this is you've got 16 keys here and you can do things like grouping and stereo panning and so on. And all that's set up through the, the wizard. There's a wizard set up and, and to me, this, this whole user interface, this is straight out of drive rack. Yeah. yeah. If you look at it, it's, it's got the backlit screen, same big encoder, same sort of feel as a, mm -hmm. uh, a DBX drive rack. But what's really cool is you're not limited to just the same 16 channels for everyone. Um, if you cascade multiple TR1616s, you just choose different transmit banks and then you can pick up up to any 16 of 256 mm. channels on each station. You can have them different across each station. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, it does give you some scope for confusion, I guess, with, with the musicians. Mm. Um, the downside is that I think the setup for this is more complicated. Yeah, look, I think the, the person doing monitors or, or front of house engineer, depending on how the workflow goes, is going to have to set the system up and then take requests basically from the musos going, oh, you know, I want this, I want that. I mean, it's 256 channels at 48K and 128 at 96 if you're running yes. it. Um, you, you're probably running somewhere around 24 to 32 in an average. These are often found in worship, so an average worship band, that's, something like that's that. That's, I think, a realistic estimate. Yeah, so to, to you, what, what you want to do, I think, is put things on, on subgroups and then send them to the band, you know, like a, a drum kit on a stereo pair, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's going to take some, some uh, back-end know-how and then, you know, let the musicians pick off after that what they want. Mm. Uh, look, uh, I think uh, another another point to mention, there are some, some additional ports on the back which you know, we're not using today, obviously. I mean, there's headphones on the side. Mm. You know, you've got master controls for you know, low and high frequency and reverb master as well as an overall master level. There's a little mm. meter here. Um, there are twin XLR outputs, so you can actually feed a pair of you know, stereo active wedges or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, there are also a couple of other connectors. There's a USB and there's this little mini DIN sort of proprietary connector that says DSC. Yeah, um, what is that, Jim? I think that's for future expansion. Okay. But look, what I would have loved to see with this, because you do have so much scope in here to do things like naming channels, for instance. You can name you know, your first two channels, drum subgroup or whatever. Mm. I'd love to be able to propagate the setup from one unit out to the rest of the mm. units mm. on the network. I think that's... That's what would make it uh, the absolute win for me. I mean, certainly, uh, price-wise, I think this is this has definitely got a lot of appeal. Mm. Um, you know, there there are more expensive systems out there which don't do as much. Mm. Mm. Yeah, look, I think one of the other uh, notable things for me is that you have to run a little wall watt power supply for each one, so this is not uh, power over Ethernet, uh, which would be quite handy. Um, is it a problem? I don't think so, but uh, you know. It's nice to be lazy. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I do like the idea of a, of a one cable sort of solution mm. where uh, in the, the power over Ethernet mm. style. But look, f I think for the price, that, that's a compromise I'd mm. probably be willing to make. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I'm sure that they do actually make a, a six output power supply, which you can then you know, mm. dump in the middle of your orchestra pit or whatever yeah. and, and just run low voltage cables out to each unit. Okay, so all in all, this is um, a really affordable and high quality solution for personal monitoring um, in uh, a market where you can get um, a lot less for a lot more. Mm, definitely. Mm.